Hello and welcome back. I am happy to be talking to someone who has won a national championship at LSU, played multiple years in the NFL. He played Survivor, which was a stepping stone on his way to the Challenge USA, where he crushed the competition in the finals to win and recently got second place in the Challenge World Championship. Please give it up for Danny. Thank you for being here. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm having a good time with the show. Um, yeah, I've done a, a few podcasts this time just because I'm not sure if I'm going back on. So I really just want to like enjoy the whole experience this time. You know what's wild? And I wasn't even going to get started into this, but uh, you've been talking online with a lot of the fans, which can I just say I love as somebody who is a huge fan of the show, just getting the opportunity to, to like possibly be seen by some competitors that are have been playing on the show and have that interaction. But that has like the edit or something that has happened on this season has led to a lot of criticism from the fans, either on Twitter and sometimes even on the challenge official podcast with, uh, I think some of the hoes calling you irksome at one point. Do you take it that the edit is not portraying your plans out fully, or do you think it's just how the fandom is like, or certain fandoms are like viewing the season? Uh, no, I understand it from a certain extent. I, I mean, the, the challenge podcast was a little weird just because some of the stuff that Devin was saying was I, I felt like it was way off but I do understand how the edit can make it seem like I'm playing the same game as Tori and t- trying to protect people and do XYZ and all that stuff so I'm like okay well I'll just continue to to uh, respond and put my thoughts on it without giving giving away too much of the story but I do understand how they could see that but that's kind of why I was online so much I was like Y'all are just wrong. Y'all just have no idea. So I'm going to just have fun with it, you know, until the end of the season where I can kind of come explain. Well, I'm glad that you're here to explain. And then you've been doing a ton of other podcasts. Uh, Challenge Mania was such a good conversation. I felt you got a lot uh, out there that I had no idea uh, what was going on. Um, I do want to ask something because you talked about and you even jumped into the power rankings for Chantel and I talking about how close you were to possibly choosing Jody. Um, but I do want to ask, what were some of the reasonings for choosing Tori in that moment? I know we got the confessional of you saying that Kiki advised you to pick either John A or Tori, but I know something there's been there's more at play than just just some so, advice. So, listen, I love my wife and I love how they put her on the show and all that stuff. But people have to understand that we had no idea if we were going to be playing with picking who was necessarily for sure going to be on the show. So she didn't say pick Tori. What we are both were both uh, Tory fans before uh, coming on the show, and we had watched the show a lot. Uh, we actually met Tory in New York before I ever even went on Survivor. It was just like we were just fans of the challenge. We seen her at the club, and Kiki's a big fan. She was like, "Hey, I'm gonna go try to talk to Tory and see what happens." And Tory was super, super friendly. She hugged her. She said, "Hey, she was super nice." So she she became an even bigger fan. So in my mind, it's like, okay, Kiki loves Tory. Um, we both love John A because Kiki is now, she's a new mom. We have a two and a half year old. John A came on after being a mom and went back to back. So this is just naturally two people who, who I know that she will want me uh, to work with because it, you know, it just works out. But so Kiki didn't necessarily say go out there and pick Tori because like I said, we had no idea what the format of the show was going to be, but you know, she, she's a big fan of Tori. And what, 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 Another thing that goes into that, like I'm sorry, I kind of said it on Challenge Mania was, like, you know, we had saw season 38, but only up until the preview where Jordan was talking to uh, Norris and it was this big thing. And then you see Tori crying mm-hmm. on the preview and all this stuff going crazy. So nowhere in my mind that I believe that Tori and Jordan had made up, especially made up to the extent of what you saw on the world championship. <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right. Um, two, my friend Ben told me that Grant was going to pick Tory. So I never had Tory in, in like in mind at that point cuz I was like Grant's picking first, he's going to pick Tory. Um I hope nobody yeah. picks Jone and then if they do then I'm going to pick um Jody. So it kind and it moved really fast. So he picked when Grant picked um Jone, I was like, "Oh wait, wait, what do I do? What do I do?" And it's kind of like a panic mode and it's like, "Okay, flip the coin." Tory. <laughs> so uh you know, that, that's kind of <laughs> how it happened. And also like I said, Tory uh, purposely did not talk game with any of the MVPs before um, mm-hmm. we picked because she said she she you know she wanted to wait to see 
how how everything was going to play out. So she didn't divulge any information about her and Jordan. So I can only go based off what I had seen uh, on that preview before we left. And she's great okay. though. Also, okay. she's great. She's a great player. She won a, a season thirty eight. We hadn't seen it. Didn't know how it happened. Um, so like no no shot at her. She's she was a great competitor too. So that also went into uh, picking her as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean. I, you bring up Kiki being a huge fan of Tori. I mean, after watching the season, I mean, is she, are, are you both still huge fans of Tori? Uh, listen, I don't, I don't have an issue with Tori. Um, like I said, the, the partnership and how it played mm-hmm. out on the show, it was not as as head as it as it as it seemed. Not for the reasons that that was, were portrayed on uh, on the screen. Now, my wife is a different story. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she she <laughs> hears all the all the behind the scenes stuff that you know I probably can't tell uh, on the podcast. So she has her own feelings about it. But we do not hate Tori. If Tori texts me, we'll talk about the Eagles versus the Cowboys. Everything is fine. Um, it just you know the show is the show and personal is personal. So personally, we're good. Show wise, I, I, I'm still upset with how it played out. <laughs> I totally understand that as well. Um, I do want to talk about one moment that keeps on like kind of burnt into my brain a little bit, which is the 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 burn votes. Um, I was that was pretty hotly contested with me because I just don't understand that strategy, especially when you guys were like tied at one point in some of these voting. Um, Was it as frustrating to you? feeling that you had to burn vote on yourself or that was the only uh, real way of compromise between you two um, because it was frustrating to me as an audience member watching y'all <laughs> have no, to settle was, to that. It was, it was the first one wasn't frustrating because it was, it was kind of planned that way to kind of work out mm-hmm. to get the road to be able to put in Jordan. <clears throat> but when we started voting for ourselves, it was like, it was either that or we would sit at the table for the rest of the time because it was no change in Tori's mind and getting her to vote for Casey. Um, mm-hmm. And then on the last one, it was like Jordan. She's like, Jordan said he's not voting for Emily. And yes, I was like, well, OK. She's like, well, I think I want to vote for Emily. And yes. And I'm like, well, at this point, I have I have 100 percent faith in Sarah. And the last chance that we have to get Jordan out of the game is for either Sarah and Theo to say, hey, listen, all right, last minute, mm-hmm. we're going to throw them in, or to have Emily and Yes uh, put that vote on Jordan and Cash. So that one wasn't that big of a deal to me because I'm like, one, Sarah's not going to throw us in, and if there's any chance for us to get Jordan out, like this is a last-ditch effort for TJ, like possibly say, hey, listen, I'm picking or whatever. Like this is just the last chance for us to get Jordan in. So to me, that one wasn't as big, but that Casey one, you like – you know, I voted for Darrell and I told Darrell I wasn't going to say his name. So I was like, listen, I voted for somebody who I said I wasn't going to vote for. So how about you do it? And she's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, we're best friends. Uh, Casey gave me 50 grand uh, and I offered to give up 50. I was like, I, they, listen, if they give me a checkbook right now. I'll write you 50 if that's what's, you know, if that's what's holding you. She's <laughs> like, I just, I just can't do it. And I was like, all right. And then so that whole you you hate me, don't you? Was just based off the fact that she couldn't make a decision, and I'm just looking mm-hmm. at her like I like I don't I don't I don't know what you want me to do. And like Jordan and everybody at the table was like, "Come on, Tori, goodness!" Um, but you know she she never did it, and we almost we almost went in. If they don't let us revote, you know <laughs> that's us. That's us going in. So yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, I mean, my gosh, like, I, yeah. I, I'm not. I've said my piece over multiple episodes about about this. So I, I just want to keep on going with with uh, I heard, listen, your. I, I, I listen to I listen to all of it. So I, and I understand like I understand I like how it seems too. Um, but like I, like I was listening to you and I was like the first one is planned. You know, like I said, Darrell just mm-hmm. didn't 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 pull the trigger. Um, and it wasn't planned to stalemate. Ben turned his back and then Plan B was okay. If we stalemate, then it's just all on Darrell. Um, yeah, but the moment Casey, yeah, I was, I'm like, I literally looked down to the end of the table because Sarah and Theo were going to vote before Casey and Troy. So mm. however they made their vote was pretty much the determining factor. So I looked at Tori, the sec- I mean, at Sarah, the second time going around, I was like, Sarah, you know what? Just vote for us. Like, I like, y'all don't have to risk y'all game for, for me and Tori can't make a decision. Just vote for us and let's just get this over with. Um, you know, and then Sarah and Theo had their conversation and they they voted 
the same way they did the first time. But at, at, at some point, I was like, you know what, man? If we go home, that's fine. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy in here. <laughs> was, I mean, was, that uh, goes into my next question: is which season was harder for you in terms of like just harder? It, was it the Challenge USA being like new and it, with uh in, new into the Challenge realm? Or was this season harder playing with all the vets? Or was it easier because you had the USA underneath your belt at that point? No, nah, it was this one. This one was tougher for a few reasons. One, like I said, I have a two year old. Um, I just left for six weeks earlier that year. Mm-hmm. Then it was like, now you have to go back. I'm, I work in football, so I'm missing football season as well. Now I'm missing my family and all that, it, you know, plus I'm button heads with Tori. Ben stabbed me in the back. Uh, me and Theo get into it a little bit. And I'm just like, this ain't going how I expected it to go. And especially since in my mind, I'm like, if Jordan is in the final, he's going to win. Are we going to have a very hard time beating him if we can't get him out? So at some point, I was just like laying in my bed and production came in. I remember right before um, the trivia challenge, I was walking up the stairs and the producer was walking behind me. And she's like, hey, Danny, look. We need you to come out of your room and do it, shoot at least one scene a day. Like, can you do that for us? Because at that point, I was just kind of locked in my bed. I was like, I don't even want to see these people. I just want to get to the final win and take my butt home. So this one, much harder. USC, USA, not so much, man. Everybody's kind of in that same that same life experience level. Um, we kind of talked about the same things, me, Dom, Desi, Tyson, um, and then everybody – you're forced to build new relationships. So that is the game that you essentially want to play. The relationships that you build will then get you far in the game or if you make a wrong decision to get you out. So it was fun to get to know new people, talk to them, and then play the game how I, I believe it should be played. Wow. I mean, you wouldn't have seen known that from the edit that you were having that m- miserable of a time at one point during – the season. I mean, they know how to edit around certain things or uh, portray certain things. Yeah. Um, if you, so, you, if you look at the last maybe three or four episodes, every time you see me, I'm laying in my bed having a conversation. <laughs> like I'm laying in the bed with Sarah having a conversation. We're in my room when we signed the contract having a conversation. Like I'm just in my room uh, for the entire time. And then I looked at myself on that last interview. I had this black shirt on, and I'm like, I'm skinny as hell. And my wife is like, You look like a stick. Like. It was noticeable from week from that first episode until you see me in that final confessional where it was like, yeah, I was I was 24 pounds lighter and it and it and it showed. Yeah, I think on the Challenge Mania podcast at the end, you said you lost more weight here than on Survivor, which is wild. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I was in it. So I didn't I didn't realize like what I was going through at the time. So I called my wife one time and she's like, you look like you on Survivor. I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you're skinny. I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. I thought she was just joking. And then I saw Darrell, and Darrell was like, if we go into a hall, bro, this is how I want you to look. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, bro, you slim. You lost a lot of weight. And I'm thinking he's talking, you know, five pounds, you know, 10 pounds, not 24. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was noticeable. I'm, I'm sure they were happy as they saw me kind of slimming down. Talking about the contract that you uh, signed with Jordan, Tori, and Sarah, um, earlier on, the edit made it seem like you and Sarah were just hell-bent on getting Jordan out, mainly Jordan out. And then a few episodes later, it seems like you and Tori are patching things up, and then all of a sudden you're signing a contract late in the season with Jordan. How did that all come about? Like, How did we get from one position of you wanting to get him out all the way up to, okay, let's just sign it and... Let's move on. Yeah, listen, the season started off with me and Tori having a conversation talking about how we wanted the end of the game to look. And we both agreed that Wes and Jordan and those those people with the, with the big endurance, but with the good endurance, are the people that you kind of don't want to run in the final. Um, and I'm talking to Tori about getting Jordan out, and she's like, I first say, hey, listen, we have to get Jordan out. She's like, no, I understand. You don't want him in the final. Like, we don't want him in the final. I'm like, listen. I know y'all probably have something going on, but if you don't want to know, then just tell me now. And then whenever it happens, it just happens. That way you can just say you had no idea. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, I, like, I want to know. Like, I want to know. I can do it. I want to know. So at this point, I'm like, okay, we're on the same page. We're good. So from episode one, where we have this understanding that we need to get Jordan out um, at some point, because if he makes it to the final, we're probably in trouble. Um, all the way up until Darrell um, 
and Kiki win, right? Because I'm like, okay, we have the numbers. As long as we stay in the middle or we win, one of our teams win, then we have the numbers to possibly get Jordan in. So first challenge, we well, after <laughs> after the qualifier, we decide that we're going to go with Argentina because Argentina seemed like they were willing to play with us. I was rooming with Ben High. I was rooming mm-hmm. with Rodri, um, Claudia, and um, Huhui were good with Sarah. So we're like, that's, that's the people who are going to vote with us. So we picked them. Claudia loses. We're like, okay, all right, this is it's gonna change now. Uh Nelson Hahui lose right after that. And I'm like, oh man, listen, this is gonna be a struggle. We're just losing all the numbers. Did we pick the <laughs> wrong side? Uh right after that, Rodri and uh and Naya lose. And I'm like, oh, this is this is getting rough. We probably got one more shot. We gotta keep these people out of last place. Um, so when Darrell wins, he walks by me. He's me and him had conversations about getting Jordan out, um, just based off his experience with Jordan in the elimination and all, all stars, and just you know we want the final to be easier for us. And Darrell looked at me as a person he could possibly beat because I was two hundred and thirty pounds, and I was like, okay, man, well I could possibly beat Darrell too. Uh, but he, as soon as he won, he walks by and he says, "Hey, whispered, line them up and I'll knock them down." I'm like. Yes, I find like we have something. <laughs> this is we got the numbers at this point. Okay. Uh Wes and Zara came in last, who weren't one of our numbers. Mm-hmm. So now it's perfect for us because we're all we're all in the vote. And I have a conversation with Ben, and Ben says, Yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm good with that. Let's do it. Let's stick with Australia. I'm like, okay, perfect. Um, so we get to the table. First shot is Ben turns his back and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like I just had a conversation with you. I thought we were building a relationship and then you just, you just straight lied to my face. So I'm like, but we can still hold on to it because me and Tori are voting last. So when you see me saying, I don't know who to vote for, it was so many people voting. My head was spinning. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I want to make sure I place my vote in the right spot. So it ends up being a stalemate and not putting Grant and uh, Jonay in. Um, so when she's like, hey, you want to vote Kelly and Tristan? I'm like, heck yeah, that's a stalemate. Let's do it. Um, so when we stalemate, I'm like, here it is, Jordan versus Wes. Like maybe yeah. 30 minutes, an hour later, uh, Darrell comes in my room. And he's like, he got this look on his face where it's like, hey, man, I'm not like I'm not going to be able to do it. Who, who's at the bottom of USA? And of course, Ben's at the bottom of USA now because he just turned his back on us. Um, so I tell him, <laughs> uh, Ben and Casey and... You know, I don't know how much that went into, you know, their decision to throw him into elimination, but coincidence or whatever it is, Ben and Casey end up going into elimination. So after that, I was like, wait, Darrell's not willing to do it. The team that we're going with, they keep coming in last. I'm on the wrong side. If you guys want to do something, y'all are on your own and do it. Y'all can do it. I help where I can. But other than that, I'm not leading the charge. I'm getting this Jordan, Jordan out. So I kind of just laid off of it at that point. It was, it was, it was too oh. much work for me to do. When I was already safe. Is that one of the more frustrating parts with maybe playing with legends who have done so many seasons is like the the way that they want to wait to make moves? <laughs> I think that's the craziest thing ever, right? Because it's, it, especially based off how our game went and how the voting system went, right? Because they're like, yeah, okay, well, Jordan's going to go down. He's going to come back and then he's going to get revenge. And I was like, well, what numbers? He's going to go down. Mm-hmm. He may win. In order for him to get you into elimination, like you, just get his revenge on you, one, he would have to win the daily, and then he would have to uh, get the numbers to get you voted in as well. And and we're with you, right? So you, we're on your side. So and it's like it's going to be almost insurmountable for him to get get revenge on you unless something goes, goes awry and everybody's like, just wait. And I'm like, well, this is not your regular uh, challenge where it's on for like three months. Like we got 12 episodes. Like, at what point yeah. are you like, okay, we're going to wait to episode eight and you're going to get that one shot. And then you're like, well, we, we we tried. If it was up to me, if it was up to me, I promise you, I would have had Jordan in every elimination, probably except the Rodri one, because I wasn't even sure if he was going to compete. But I would have had him up in every single elimination. Up against Wes, uh, not Bananas because Justine was there, but that's still a good matchup. Just because I like, I really had a feeling like that is that is going to be what stops us in the final. I mean, to me, I was I was saying the same thing. You got to take the shots as much as you can. I mean, I just think of War of the Worlds uh, two, where he was in like three or four eliminations, and they just nobody could get him out. I mean, he was 
he was <laughs> doing what Darrell said. He was lining him up and knocking him down, uh, but he was actually doing it. This would have been the, it the, been just the eliminations that are in in the World Championship, and then also USA. They're so iffy. You remember Kylan goes home uh, with Kira against yeah. uh, Leo and Alyssa. Nobody pegged them to do that, and Dom made a big move. He's like, "You got to make the move when you have the shot. And when you got the chance, you got to take it." And I'm that's the thought process that I had going into the World Championship. But those. You know, the, the the U.S., I mean, the MTV challengers, they don't they don't think like that. And they want to try to condition you to play the game that they've always played, which has led to, you know, how many. And I tweeted this 14 of the regular uh, MTV versions of the season has been four different winners for the most part. Mm-hmm. Ten out of 14. Well, like, at what point are you going to be like, man, you know what? I, I probably should change something. Like, when if, when, when are the people on the MTV channels going to say, man, look, we, we got to get somebody new in there because they just making us look bad. There's no reason. There's no reason for 10 of the last 14 to be only split between four people. But, you know, and those four they, people are willing to play that friendship game because they know, hey, I'll play your friendship game. Just get me walk me up to that final starting point and then I'll just outpace you and uh, <laughs> I'll see you later kind of vibe. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the final, uh, you gave great detailed insight on what was edited out of the finals, which um, if you want to go over that uh, uh, for those who didn't listen to the Challenge Mania podcast. Yeah, I guess I'll just walk through the whole thing. It was it, it was a, it was a long final. Um, we have, we start the night before we get on the train and everybody's going to sleep. I go to the bathroom. I see Sarah in a like she's made a pallet in the bathroom because she cannot stop going to the bathroom. Every She said every about 30 minutes she had to go. She had to use the bathroom. So she's like, finally, I'm just in the restroom. Wake up the next morning. I see Sarah and I'm like, oh, she don't she don't look good. She has to be dehydrated. She probably didn't get any sleep. This is going to be rough uh, for Sarah and Theo. And sure enough, we hop off the train and it's a dirt. It's like a sandy path. And we're in South Africa. So it's hot. And TJ's like, hey, we're going to run down this path until you get to a water po- waterfall. You're going to propel yourself up the waterfall, swim out to get four puzzle pieces, uh, swim back to where the waterfall is, and then run, you know, like another, I want to say another two to three miles. And one of them was a very steep incline. I think you saw Jordan and Kaz going up that very steep incline where it was super rocky. Couldn't run up. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, it, was, it was horrible. We got to a puzzle, very easy puzzle. Um, and then you run like about another two or three miles until you get to the finish line. Um, and starting out, we go, I'm like, I know my endurance. So I'm telling Tori, I'm like, Tori, this is going to be a long race, very long race. All right. We are not setting the pace. Like, it don't make no sense for us to do that. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, like, I got you. I'm, I'm Actually, I'm running with you wherever you at. Man, the TJ blew that horn and Tori up there with uh, Jordan and, uh, and Troy. And I'm like, I'm going to just chill back here with uh, Theo and Sarah because at worst, I got to go into elimination and, and fight them, right? The last two teams that make it, you know, they battle for whatever. But at worst, I'm, I'm okay with that. Or, or if it's a purge or whatever, I'm, I'm still good. So I'm running back with uh, Theo and Sarah. And Theo's like, Theo's ahead of me. Um, and I, you know, I keep them all in my sight. But I'm like, Man, where's Sarah at? Because now I'm worried about her. Um, well, she's having to stop like every 20 minutes to go use the bathroom in the bushes because um, her stomach is just messed up. She's not able to keep anything down. And I'm like, well, she might. I don't want her to pass out out here because she's dehydrated, whatever. And, you know, we finally get to the waterfall. We get I probably get to the waterfall about five, six minutes before Sarah and Theo's at the waterfall. This is this is just a funny part because I got to mess with Theo because. Yeah, it's Theo. <laughs> Um, so Theo's at the waterfall, he arrives and he's like, man, oh, he's like, oh man, I can't believe this. You know, when I come back, I can't believe this, 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 how, this, how it's going to happen for me. And I'm like, Theo, you know, just relax, relax, man. Sarah's going to be okay. I'm going to tell you something about Sarah. She not quitting and she, she going to catch on. She'll be all right. And he's just frustrated, super mad. So we go through the next part. Um, and we go up the waterfall, we come back down, uh, and we leave before, uh, Theo and Sarah go up the ridge, put the puzzle together, and probably about a mile and a half in, I can hear Sarah saying, come on, Theo. Come on, Theo. Let's go. <laughs> so she's right there with me and Tori. We're like, where's Theo at? She's like, yeah, he, he back there. I think he's like, he's tired or he's cramping or something. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so, 
So we finished the first part, and in my mind, I'm you know I'm a, I'm, I'm I study film a lot, so I'm just thinking of this analytically, and I'm like, okay, Sarah and Theo, I'm not worried about them, um, but man, Jordan and Troy are setting a pace that's crazy. Hopefully, mm-hmm. somebody's body fails because I, I know we have a lot a uh, lot left to do, and then you see us pull up to uh, the loops of hell. So when you when you watch the show and they say uh, Jordan has a 15 minute head start. I mean, he won the day by 15 minutes. It was Mm -hmm. because of those two legs, not being 15 minutes ahead of us in the loops of hell. So it's like, Hey, did that drink take you 15 minutes to drink behind Jordan? It's like, no, (laughs) we probably finished five or six minutes behind Jordan them uh, after, you know, after they finished drinking it, but it was a culmination of the first, uh, I want to say three, because you run, you get up the waterfall, come back down and then do the loops of hell. So it was a, a mix of all that for why we were so far behind and we knew we weren't catching them for day one. <laughs> like we, we were so far behind. Yeah. We, knew, we knew it wasn't happening. That makes so much more sense. Um, honestly, cause I was, uh, I even sat there, like they tried to make the edit, make it seem like you, you guys were, I mean, I'm sure the drink was disgusting, but I was like, there's no way 15 minutes just like right. behind them that whole time. Like that's no way. Uh, so, I wanted to talk to you about the um, the editing of this final because when it aired um, and released, you wrote that like 30% of the finals was cut out. And then hearing all that was actually cut out, because I mean, there's going to be parts that are always going to be cut out. Like production will always want more than two less of anything. But normally it's like one or two legs cut out. This sounds like it's so much cut out and it, you can see it in the edit like a lot of people were just confused by how this was all put together it was, I, listen, it was weird I, I, I waited the whole season uh because i wanted to see the <laughs> final in its entirety so then i could feel like i proved my point right because the mm-hmm. whole season you know, everybody has their things to say about who's right who's wrong whatever and in my mind i'm like i know i'm right right but i can't say it so i'm like bookmarking people's tweets so i can go back in and say <laughs> yeah I think, did you see that and I don't watch the show until after I get off work and I can watch it with the family. But in the mornings, I'm looking on Twitter and I'm just trying to see what people's reactions are. And they're not saying anything about, uh, you know, this bike riding portion or going up the waterfall or any of that. I'm like, oh, this is weird. (laughs) This is super weird. Maybe maybe they're not showing all of it. But I had no idea that they had cut that much of the final out. And I was like, well, now I got to go on here and like I got to do these podcasts. And then I also have to tweet about what really happened. And, if, you know, people don't believe me. That's fine. But I said it. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to go out there and challenge what I said because they will be lying. One one time in the season, I just remembered you replied to somebody's <laughs> tweet as just bookmark and left it. And I was like, <laughs> all right, Danny's got something to say about this afterwards. Um, I know as an audience member, especially a show that's going directly to streaming, hearing that much of the final being cut out is infuriating. Does do you as a competitor hate that much being edited out of the final? I think because I didn't win. Yeah, if I won, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Like when <laughs> Challenge USA was over with, and they were all complaining about puzzle uh, time and out and stuff. I was like, I don't, I don't give a shit. I won. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have anything that that is unseen except I won. For this one, it was different um, because one, it was very hard and. For whatever it is, the people that go on the challenge, like I don't want to be the best challenger ever, but I also don't want people to to take away from what we did, right? And most of the time, it's the MTV mm-hmm. challengers, the OG challengers that watch the show. I'm like, oh, that ain't hard. This is just a spinoff, and you guys didn't do this and do that. And I'm like, and I'm watching. I'm like, oh, they're gonna know this was hard. And then you watch him, and it's like, we we skipped the first ten miles of the final that had to do with swimming and doing all that stuff, and just go straight into the loops of hell with sixteen. So. That's frustrating, but I am glad that there were other MTV legends on there who can then step in and say, hey, they left some stuff out, bro. It was it was a hard fight. Um, so, yes, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. It only bothers me because I, I wanted people to see a little bit more, just one part, because at the same time, Tori's, her endurance is crazy. She's fast. She she's mm-hmm. I've never seen anybody speed walk like Tori. It's, it's almost a job to where we're like, all right, we're going to walk. We're going to walk for the next, like, you know, whatever, quarter mile. And she's, by the time we finished that, she probably like 300 yards ahead of me. I'm talking about swinging the arms. I'm like, man, is she, she's good. But, uh, you know, I, I know my endurance. She's good, except for she has one weakness. And uh, that is with biking. 
Um, how did how much did that biking portion set you back um, when she told you about her biking accident? It was over when we finished the bike. <laughs> it was like it, it, we we never. So whatever we, we wake up the next day after. Wait, I guess we we passed over the um, Carolina Reapers because everybody was asking about the oh. shot collars and what was so scary about that and why blah blah. The real issue was if you fell asleep, your partner had to eat two Carolina Reapers. So that's why everybody was kind of in it together because. When I'm looking at Tori, I'm, I'm like, listen, if you if you fall asleep, I'm not eating those. We're going home. Like, I'll, I'll be the next mm-hmm. I'll be the next uh, spinoff guy to just go and quit because I'm not eating two Carolina. Reapers. <laughs> I just saw what it did to Jimmy and Darrell and all of them on All Stars. And they ate one. They will tell us we got to mm-hmm. eat two. So if you fall asleep, I'm out. And then it was kind of like a consensus of everybody saying, like, hey, I'm not eating those Carolina Reapers. So that's why we kind of came together and was like, listen. We don't want to see people who are like this. We want to go ahead and compete and, you know, and see who wins it. So that's why it was like, hey, we're going to work together and we're going to try to stay up because everybody was scared of the Carolina, Carolina Reapers. Not so much scared of the shock collars. I mean, I, I'll take a shock. It'll wake me up and then, you know, I'll be OK. But I'm not eating that. Not eating it. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I mean, you just I forgot they ate that in the All-Stars until you just reminded me. And Darrell was like on his knees at one point, just like how much pain it was. He told us about it, and then so I saw it. I saw it was what it was doing to Jimmy. Jimmy like like she needed to go to the hospital, and you see like Darrell's eyes mm-hmm. running and snot and all that. He's like it messed up my stomach, uh, so that was bad. Um, but then we wake up the next day, and this is where it starts to get where I'm like, this is why this is why I don't want your your friends in the final. This is why I don't want them in there. One mm-hmm. because in your mind. You're not really sure if you're you're good enough to overcome a deficit against these uh, against these two teams. Right. You're like Casey and Troy are are beast. You know, Jordan. And you're like, okay, if he's 15 minutes ahead of us now, then we got no shot. So we wake up the next morning and we're doing our, you know, our interviews. And they ask her, like, what does she think about it? And. I'm, I'm expecting, you know, something like, listen, we're going to fight this out and then whatever happens, happens. But we're going to try to figure out a way to make up some ground. And it was instead it was like, hey, um, yeah, I just I just want to finish. Um, these two teams are great. They've been beating us at everything. Um, so, yeah, I just I just want to finish. And I was like, OK. And they were like, Danny, what do you think about that? And I'm like, I don't know what the hell my partner is talking about, but it's going to work out for us because the day two, y'all always give us a way to kind of catch up. Like it was double points in USA. They reset the times uh, sometime on day two. So it's going to work out for us. We just got to, you know what I'm saying? Be ready for that opportunity. So we're going to get it together and we get off the, um, off the train. And sure enough, TJ's like, Hey, time's reset. Y'all got, y'all only got 15 minutes of sleep, but that's, that's y'all only penalty because right now starting here, whoever makes it to the finish line, is the team that wins. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, told you, <laughs> told you, but I think it's hard. It's, it's hard to get out of that mindset. But then he's like, run to these bikes. So I'm like, okay, we just ran, you know, whatever, almost 30 miles. Are you going to give us a bike now? This is great. <laughs> right. We don't have to run. <laughs> we'll ride bikes. And we get to the bike and, you know, you see everybody going a little slow because we're trying to figure out, because TJ had told us like the brakes were on different sides than the American bikes. So everybody's like getting on yeah. and they're trying to test, you know, the right brake is at the front because he's like, you don't want to hit the front brake on accident too fast. You'll flip. So everybody's like, OK, let me let me figure it out. Um, we hop on the bike and sure enough, we start we, we go straight a little bit, which is what you probably saw on the on the um, on the screen. But then it starts to like mm-hmm. turn. Right. So you, you're mountain biking. You're, you're in sand and you're just kind of going down the mountain. And uh, we hit the first turn and she's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I was like, huh? What? Like your, your legs tired. She was like, no, I had a biking accident. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. I can't do it. Now at this moment, I'm like, oh man, she, it must've been something serious. Like my, like I, I need to like kind of push her along and help her out because she probably trying to overcome this fear of like being in a hospital for a week or breaking a leg or, or something like for you not to be able to ride the bike. So it was literally the whole time. And she thanked me for it after it was like, Thank you for coaching me through. But we literally would, she would ride for like 30 seconds and then she'll hop off. She was like, I can't, I can't. And then she'll hop back on for like 30 seconds. She was like, I just can't do it. And I think what was scaring her was since you're on sand, the back tire would Mm. spin sometimes and it would just freak her out. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Um, but then we get to this little incline. I'm like, okay, we're going to get on the bike now. And she still didn't want to get on. So I'm like giving her the Tom Brady talk. Like, hey, listen, everybody, all the <laughs> great ones, they 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 do their best when they feel at their worst. And like, I know you were tired and you didn't feel good this morning. But if we just keep grinding, we keep going, like something's going to fall in our favor. And we, we bike well, when we finally get to the end. The next portion is you have to ride the bike to a lake from like you're on the dirt. So you have to ride your bike across the grass to this lake. Get undressed, put your life jacket on, hop in the boat, row this boat to the middle of that lake that you saw Emily win, Emily and Yes win. Mm -hmm. Go to the middle of the lake, get off the boat, grab four puzzle pieces. I mean, no, you, you had to grab some like um, trivia, trivia things, right? So they had the answers to, to questions. So you get off, you grab it, then you got to row back, hop off the boat, get undressed. This is just how long it took. Hop off the boat, get undressed. And then you go to this table and it's like nine questions. And then so you have to line up the, the right answers with those questions before you can move on to the next one. Now, when we are getting to the grass, not even to the lake, we're getting to the grass where you have to then still go probably another two or three hundred meters to get to the lake. Jordan and Kaz are running past us because they just finished all that. And we never saw Troy and Casey. So Troy and Casey are ahead of Jordan and Kaz, and we never see them, and Jordan, Jordan and Kaz have finished all this. So after we see Jordan and Kaz, then we have to do row the boat, <laughs> come back, do all that <laughs> stuff, the puzzle. And on my mind, I'm like, listen, I'm not one to give up hope, but goodness gracious, it's going to take a miracle uh, for us yeah. to, catch, to catch Jordan. But I'm like, well, maybe Kaz is like her body's failing her or something because they seem like they're pretty far behind. I never saw Troy and Casey. So we're just kind of walking it out, trying to trying to see, you know, what to do next. Um, and then we get to the next puzzle and Casey and Troy are, you know, they still there. And I'm like, whoa, OK, well, maybe Jordan and them just left. Maybe we were making up some ground. We didn't really run much, but I'm like, OK, maybe maybe they pushed themselves too, too hard in the first day. Um, and we get to that puzzle and, you know, we having a hard time figuring out. That's probably one of the hardest slide puzzles puzzles i've ever seen it's not anything that you you find on your phone when you're trying to do slide puzzles it was like yeah. open up the square and then get it to come in but so we're having a hard time with it and troy literally looks over to us because casey's laying on the ground and troy's like hey do you want me to do the puzzle for you danny i'm like of course come over and do the puzzle because <laughs> like, in my mind i'm like everything's working out it's all working out for mm -hmm. us it, they, we are passing them up to go in second. Troy's going to do this puzzle for us, and something's going to happen with, with Jordan or Kaz, and then all of a sudden we're going to win first place. Um, and yeah. he comes over for like 30 seconds. He's like, you got to do it this way, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I don't care how you got to do it. Just finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the story's like, nah, that's enough. I don't, I, don't, I don't want it like that. I don't want you. Like, we'll figure it out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, we have, this, is, this is an opportunity. And sure enough, you know, Troy goes back over there and it takes us when we uh, this is what got me. OK, so Troy's going to help us out. She <laughs> says no. Jordan goes up the mountain. And at this point, we thought that was the end of the race. So right. we're looking up and we're like, wait, somebody coming back down. Maybe they're coming back down to tell us that they finished. So they start coming back down and Jordan runs to the water jug to refill his camel pack. And we're like, y'all not done. He was like, "Nah, we're not done. And then he is telling Tori how to complete the puzzle. Two minutes later, that puzzle's completed. And I'm like, okay, now we got to climb this mountain. I know we're not coming in first. <laughs> Only when we come in yeah. first is somebody pass out because now we have to climb the mountain and come back down. Um, but yeah, we finished second. But I'm not, and I'm by no means am I saying we would have won had we not messed up the biking portion. I'm saying the competition would have been a little different if you have first and second place in your sights. And you know that there's yeah. really a really a real chance for you to be able to catch up. But since you don't, then it's like, all right, dude, we got we just keep walking and hoping for a miracle. Um, you know, and it just it just didn't work out. But I didn't like the mindset at the beginning of the day, too. And then the biking, like I said, the bike is not her fault. I, I, I could be upset about not being able to ride a bike, mm -hmm. but if you can't do it. You just can't do it. Um, and that's. So I'm not I'm not upset about that. I'm just like, man, that mindset is crazy. And this is what you want to try to avoid when you're trying to get somebody like Jordan out. Not just because you may he may be faster than you, but if you don't feel like on an even playing field, you if you feel like everything has to go right for you to beat him, the moment something goes wrong, 
then you checked out. <laughs> you don't you don't have the same drive. And that's in any I say any uh, competitive, uh, like in football, in basketball, whatever it is, right? If you play Steph Curry and they go up by 30, uh, you like, man, fold it. We're going to fold it in and put the twos in because that's, that's oh, just yeah. you believe that player is so great. And that's kind of that's kind of where we were at that moment. But I was hoping they showed the bike because everybody's going to be like, yeah. And that what they showed was Tori walking in front of me and everybody's like, well, she drug you to the end. And you were walking. And I was like, you have no idea how far we were behind. And they just so <laughs> happened to show – uh, Jordan and Cavs running every once in a while and Troy and Casey. But I can guarantee you that 44-mile run, everybody walked. Everybody walked at some point. There's <laughs> no way oh, they yeah. did that thing without walking. And yeah, it, like you said, it was it would be different because you did catch up with everybody. It's just that you were so far behind at that point that it was just hard to overcome that. Um, do you think at all does the 15 minutes that you got first of all i want to know like did it just feel like you just closed your eyes and tj was just waking you all up and then uh do you think that that plays a factor in like the mental preparedness that maybe uh that that it just kind of took over that maybe she was just super exhausted that she was just like i just want to finish at the end of the day because it seems like y'all went through a, a a crap ton the first day <laughs> and then uh, by the time you're getting out, she's just like, I'm I'm kind of spent at that point. Yeah, I, listen, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it did. That 15 minutes, uh, to me, felt like felt like an hour. Because like you said, we had did so much. Uh, we had done so much mm-hmm. at that point. Up the waterfall, in the heat. We ate the nasty. Uh, the, and the stuff was like, in, like, I have a beer, Ugh. so I can't get rid of it. They didn't like let us take a shower or anything. We literally just took off what we had, and then we put the suit and stuff on. So I'm still smelling all that. And this is the only way to get away from it. Hey, man, I'm asleep. Uh, and that 15 minutes to me felt like an hour. But for me in my life, I can take a 15-minute nap and be good for a whole nother day. Like, that is just something that yeah. I'm, I'm accustomed to doing. And everybody's not like that. But I'm I'm sure that that played into it. But more so, the fact that she didn't believe that their times were going to be re- reset when she was when she was in that mm. mindset of, like, let's just finish. Um, and then coupled with, yeah, being tired as hell. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that didn't help. I do feel for you when I watch that like three times and after that smoothie is all in your beard because I used to have a giant beard at one point and anything, just anything, just anything drips in it. It's like that's all you're smelling. So I really I was like, oh, man, they just like <laughs> did Danny dirty in that in that <laughs> moment. Uh, well, on top of that, I, like I, as I'm going through this whole final, I, I have no idea that I'm 24 pounds lighter. That I'm, right. I'm obviously unhealthy. I'm I, I, like I lost probably muscle or whatever, and I can't figure out why the hell I'm crapping so bad because you know 20, 28 years of playing football, I have never cramped, <laughs> never cramped. Uh, and this time, I'm like my abs are cramping, my shoulders are cramping, and I'm like, man, I, I don't know what the hell is going on. But not until I get home do I realize, man, you was in bad shape. <laughs> He was just a bad shape. So shout out to that IV. Everybody who said, yeah, why'd you take the IV and not tour? Because I needed it. And I ain't ashamed to say it. <laughs> I needed it, yeah. man. It was, it was hot out there. You've mentioned that you will continue to watch the challenge. Uh, I think this was on the Challenge Mania podcast. I said you are going to continue to watch the challenge. Who from this season will, would you root for after playing with them and getting to know them on this season? Oh, man, so many. Uh I'm always going to root for Darrell. Um, the, like, I just, I, I love Darrell. Love what he stands for. Love what he represents, especially on the challenge. Um, Jody, me and Jody had a, 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 our connection was cool. But like, outside of the game, we, you know, I think all the parents kind of connected, right? So, Jone and me connected because mm-hmm. she's a parent. Uh, me and Sarah connect over, over being parents. Same thing with uh, Jody. And I think all of us are kind of like, we would root for each other just because we understand what it takes for you to then leave your kid to go on the show. Um, outside of that, I'm going to root for Kellyanne, uh, even though we didn't see eye to eye for most of the game. Uh, <laughs> but I still think she's <laughs> great. We still talk after, um, you know, on Instagram every once in a while. Um, on the men's side, I have to say Nelson now because, like, what he's going through, which is mm-hmm. – which is, I, I, which I would like to say this. All you uh, challenge OG people, the people who think that you're going to continue to play season – after season, because it's guaranteed, take a look at, at life and see how it can come at you. You understand? Like, this is, I love Nelson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I heard people saying, well, he might be on 40, whatever. It's not happening. <laughs> I, I can see the yeah. injury that Nelson has. And I've seen injuries, you know, in my profession. He won't be back next year. 
that is that is a very long process of what he's going through. And I'm sure he knows that as well. So you just never know. So just just play, just play for, for now. I know you got to save some of your relationships, but at the end of the day, make your money while you can. Uh, you know, enjoy it while you can because you just you just never really know. But I root for Nelson uh, as well. I root for Naya. You know what? I, I, it was it would be easier for me to tell you who I wouldn't root for. <laughs> that was my next question. That was my next question. Who would you not want to uh, like either either play with again or uh, not really uh, care for after this season was over? After playing with them and getting to know them. Uh. uh I don't really, I don't, I don't dislike anybody. Me and Bananas didn't see eye to eye on some stuff, but I'm sure he, he, he may be a great dude outside. Maybe we'll connect. Maybe we won't. If not, oh well. The only thing I don't want to see is Tori and Jordan be on the same. Actually, two things. Tori and Jordan be on the same show <laughs> and not on the same team. Like if they're gonna be on the show, mm-hmm. they need to be. They need to be paired up. Uh, so so okay. So that just rocks that way. And then, of course, I, I, like, I never want to see Ben again in my entire life. Never. Won't root for him. Don't want to talk to him. Nothing. Everybody else, fine. Uh, you know, they can text me. They can call me. They can do whatever. And they got responses because we all grinded and we all went through that same experience together. And that I, I feel like that did bond us, you know, minus that that one person. So you bring up Ben, and I did want to men- uh, ask this: what what was your uh, what was your idea or your thought process when he was medically disqualified? Um, were you kind of like thinking, "Well, there goes Casey"? I mean, that helps my game yeah. if that's one of Tory's number ones. And then, what was the what was going through your mind when not even two seconds after that, t- uh, Amber's given up her spot for Casey? Were you like, "Dang, so close"? <laughs> It was man. It, it was, for me, you know, because I know they have to make a TV show, so I do understand it. But I'm like, this is competition. I just saw it happen to Desi. Okay, Desi, Desi, and Enzo. Enzo decided he don't want to swim anymore, so Desi's out. Ugh. So Ben, this your second time. Me and him weren't seeing eye to eye, anyways. I'm like, good riddance. Don't <laughs> you can leave, but not just because of that. It just it makes it that puts me one step closer to them making uh, making the final and you know hopefully winning some money. And then me and Casey also weren't weren't uh, seeing eye to eye uh, either because she was Ben's partner. So I was like, like, can this really be happening? And then I'm scared of heights. So I was like, okay, well, two teams are leaving. Then there's no way we're doing a challenge today. So, so well, this is <laughs> down on the ground, and they're like, nah, y'all, y'all, y'all definitely have a trivia challenge today. So you know, so get ready. But nah, it, it, it ended up it ended up working out because we did beat Troy and Casey. But I would have rather seen you know. Both of them head home, except Troy. Troy's Troy's a Troy's a great guy, um, and I and I enjoyed uh, Troy. I, th- I think Ben kind of got in his ear though, so you know it, it kept us from being as close <sighs> as we probably should have been. I, I have a few more questions, and then we can wrap things up. I do want you. You did mention bananas, and then you also mentioned Sarah. I just want to, and I don't know if you remember this, but there was one argument before uh, the one voting ceremony where Bananas and Theo came walking out when you and Sarah were talking to Tori and there was this confrontation and it just seemed awkwardly edited and nobody understood what was happening. Do we know, do you know, remember the context that was going on in that? Because it just seemed like the way some people were reacting and some, it just felt like out of, out of context or out of edit. Yeah. So I think, you know, the, the Sarah's experience with uh, Johnny um, wasn't good up to that point anyways, right? So it was. I think it was a buildup mm-hmm. to Sarah and Justine are really, really close friends. They're like, they room together. And during that stalemate, um, Justine felt like Bananas wasn't giving her her voice. So I love Justine like a little sister. And when she came into the room, she was, she was super emotional. And I was like, hey, listen, do you want me? Like, are you going to go talk to him? Do you want me to get involved? Not so I can, like, be mad at him, but just let him know, like, how you feel because I don't want him not mm-hmm. not know that he made you feel this way. And she said she was going to take care of it. But Sarah sees that as well of, like, not only do you see that Justine feeling that way, but it was little stuff throughout the process of dealing with bananas and production of, like, he's been there for a long time, so I know he's comfortable and knows what to do. But – he would like tell somebody else, like, don't do that. Don't say that. Oh, hurry up. Uh, we got to hurry up and leave. We're going to be here all night. Like, don't talk when they say don't talk. 
But then when he does it or one of his friends do it, it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> it's like, ha, 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 mm-hmm. we all sit in the back. Like, we already feel like, okay, y'all looking at us as rookies, and that's fine. If you want us to be disciplined and, and like, follow the rules and all that stuff. But if you're going to be the leader, then then lead. <laughs> And then don't cut yeah. everybody else. Like, so we already felt we were feeling away about it. So when that conversation happened, um, she already wasn't really feeling bananas. And he has a way of shutting you down with the same reasoning every time. I've been doing this a long time, so I know more than you. You don't know anything. You are a survivor player. I'm a challenge player. And since it, it didn't work out for me when I did it that way, then I'm not open to doing it y'all way. And the way he says it makes it seem mm-hmm. like your idea is just stupid as hell. So Sarah goes out and says, hey, listen. And it's crazy, right? Because at that point, we're like, hey, wh- whatever y'all want to do. All right. We've been fighting with them the whole time. And Sarah literally yeah. says, hey, what, whatever you want, bro. All I need to know is just tell me the path forward. Because mm-hmm. if you're looking at the pecking order, when you first go into the house, right? You got Jordan. You got Johnny. You got Wes. You got Casey. Um, and then you have who else, right? So if there are five teams going mm-hmm. to the final, those four teams are working together. The 15 right. may be Theo and Sarah. It may be Darrell and Kiki, right? So Sarah doesn't know mm-hmm. this. So as a true strategist, she's like, listen, I'm open to doing whatever you want me to do, but I need to know when we get down to the final, whatever, six, that I'm not going to be yeah. the one that sacrificed and my chances of going, you know, to the final are based off. I'm automatically going into the nation because I'm fifth or sixth mm-hmm. in y'all's pecking order. So just tell me. And he's like, now nah, you playing it too far ahead. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. You know, maybe you should plan a little bit more, Johnny, or, or just do her that favor. Like she's trying to compromise with you. Do, do her that favor of saying, okay, we'll figure something out. But it was a total shutdown and, you know more than me. And he was so condescending the way that he said it to her. That's how it escalated of like, you didn't talk to Justine this way and piss off. You're not, you're not about to do this to me. Like everybody else will go in the room and whisper about you and how you act and all this other stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stand up for myself and, you know, and that's Sarah though, you know, so (laughs) be it overreacting or not, I don't know, but you know, that, that's Sarah. When you talk to Sarah or whatever, she's funny and she's, you know, she's going to play with you and all that stuff. But if she feel like you're talking to her in a, you know, in a condescending way, she's going to let you know, like, not me, buddy. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how that, how that happened. I don't know the exact words, but it was a much longer conversation and it was a build up uh, to that explosion. Yeah. Cause I just remember watching that. And then at some point he goes, he, he says something to the fact of like, it, it, I'm touching a nerve. I'm touching a nerve. You know what I'm saying is correct. And nothing was said at that point in the edit. So I was just like, what was said? There was some context oh, taken out. So well, that makes also, a lot of sense. Also, well, also, we have this issue of, so Johnny, and on this podcast and all these places, like, well, we put all our cards out on the table, and we told y'all who we're working with, and y'all didn't even tell us y'all are working with the Australians. And, uh, you know, Sarah's like, what cards did y'all put out on the table? And we've been, y'all been known that we've been working with the Australians since Y'all didn't even have to vote in the first one. Like, we voted in Mm -hmm. the UK with Australia. You know how close Sarah and Emily are. And, Johnny, you have not put any cards on the table because you don't have any. Uh, You look at Johnny, and I'll get into this after that. But, um, so, yeah, so the touch the nerve part was he's trying to tell Sarah, like, how she thinks or what she's doing because he's thinking that he's right. And, like, it was just a battle. But, Another conversation me and Johnny had before I, before I get off of this one was there was there was a point where me and Johnny had that conversation at the uh, at the bar and it's just me mm-hmm. and him. So very long conversation. Uh, well, it was much longer than that. But um, essentially it goes. He's like, listen, we're we're the strongest team in the house. Right. We're we're we're, we're best when we stick together and we can all vote and, and go in the same way. And I'm like, OK, but. The Australians are cool with us and they're our safety blanket because y'all have y'all have one. All right. And we will be fools to just mm-hmm. give our game to y'all. He's like, no, nah, man, just listen. Just listen. You know, um, I'm playing the middle. I'm going to just play the middle. You know, I'm going to let everything else happen. And then, uh, you know, if you can do that as well, then I think we'll be OK. And I was like, OK, so you play in the middle. Right. So, listen, you don't lie to me and then I'll, I'll be with you. But you play in the middle. So he's like, yeah, I'm playing the middle. Well, as we go throughout the game maybe even the next vote, 
Now he's working with Wes, right? And he's working mm-hmm. with Jordan. That, that, that's not the middle. <laughs> that's not the middle. <laughs> oh, by the way, him and Darrell are friends. He's on mm-hmm. Team Australia. So you're telling us we can't work with Team Australia, but it's only the people on Team Australia that you don't want to work with. So I'm looking right. at this whole thing, and I'm like, the next boat goes, um, I forgot. Let me see. Oh, it was uh, Wes had won. And I'm like, mm-hmm. let's, let's, oh, no, I'm sorry. I think Wes had lost. And it's like, let's throw in Kelly and Tristan. And before that, Johnny says, once you throw somebody in, you may as well just keep on throwing them in. It's an easy vote. Mm-hmm. So when we first go up to talk to them, we say, hey, let's throw Jordan in. They're like, they shut it down. Not happening, not doing it. Me and Sarah step off to the side. We're like, hey, let's, okay, let's compromise. All right, fine. But they're not going to give us Jordan. Maybe they'll give us Kellyanne and Tristan. And we walk back outside and we're like, okay, guys, listen. And, uh, you know, so in, in, in order for us to work together, let's, we'll compromise with y'all. Let's do Kellyanne and Tristan. They're like, nah. Johnny's like, they never going to win anything. The team you want in the game is the team who's always going to come in last. That way you don't have to worry about coming last, coming in last. Kellyanne and Tristan are never going to win anything. And I'm like, Johnny, they can win, bro. They can win. He's like, I'm telling you, they're not going to win nothing. They're not going to win anything. And at that point, me and Sarah are like, okay, Wes is in there. What's, what was really happening is they don't want Wes to have to go against Kellyanne and Tristan. So not only right. are you working with Wes, but now you're also working with Kellyanne and Tristan. So now you're just working with USA and UK. And then you also have Darrell on whatever. So I'm like, Johnny, you're not playing the middle side. So, um, so he says he hates us because at that point I'm like, you you full of it, bro. <laughs> you full of it. Just be honest with me. We, <laughs> we move forward, but that ain't the middle. Is nowhere near the middle. Oh man, that seems like I was gonna bring up. Uh, there was one the conversation in the in the club with you because there was one point where I just felt like your facial features in that was just like I'm a grown man. I've played the challenge before. You don't have to explain this to me, kind of kind of thing. But well, well, I didn't yeah. believe him. At that, I didn't believe him at that point because we know, like, I watched the show enough. Like, if you're really playing yeah. the middle, then don't tell me, okay, you're not with West because y'all had y'all little secret thing uh, on on, a, on seasons before that. So you telling me you're not working with West? You telling me you're not working with Jordan? You telling me you're not working with Darrell? If you can look me in my face and tell me that you're truly playing the middle, then we're good, bro. But then you know when they decide they don't want to put in Kelly and Tristan, I'm like, yeah, it's over, bro. You, y'all lying. And, <laughs> and another, one 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 other side note is, um, he would continue to say that we didn't tell him about our alliances with Australia, which to me we all thought it was noticeable. Like we voted with them <laughs> in our in ours. Sarah and Emily are close. Me and Grant are close. But when we do the Gates of Hell, Tori asks me. She tries to get me to throw it to Wes to let Wes win, um, which is where yeah. I find out that she also is working with Wes because of Devin. Like, Devin set this thing up for us, and Wes is cool uh, now, so he's cool, and blah, 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 blah. And if Devin comes back in the game, because at this point we thought people might may come back into the show because they had told some of the uh, vets to keep calendar dates open. So she's like, so we already have Jordan Casey. Then she's like, okay, now we're working with Wes. And she's like, what if Devin comes in the game? He's going to be my number one. So I was like, wait. So we got Devin. Uh, Casey, we got Jordan, and then you got Wes. I'm like, oh, well, now you cutting out bananas and Justine and Theo and Sarah. So I just got, I just got nothing. Mm-hmm. I just have nothing. Uh, so she tried to get me to throw it, and I'm like, hey, Wes. And we're talking. I was surprised they didn't show it. Wes is like, I was like, hey man, you got to keep my people safe. Then if you win, he's like, yeah, we gonna keep, we we'll keep you safe. And Sarah, I was like, no, nah, I need all my people safe. And he's like, huh? I was like, yeah, all the people that I'm working with. And finally, we're going back and forth. We can't come to a, to a decision. I'm like, fuck, we're, we're going to win it then. Um, and then afterwards, Tori's like, hey, are you working with the Australians? I'm like, yeah, I'm working with the Australians. She just never <laughs> goes and tells uh, Bananas this. So he still is like, I, I don't know anything about this. I'm like, that's not my fault. I had a conversation with you. Tori's my partner. She knows that I was working with the Australians. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Johnny just wasn't really in the loop this season. So. That's, 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 I think that's his fault. I mean, I don't know. The last uh, couple of seasons that he's been on 38 now, this one, it seems like he's not, uh, he's not, he's not in the loop or trying to be in the loop. Um, I don't know what loop he's in, but he's being he's, loopy. Um, he's still making it to the yeah. final. So him, 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 him that playing that game is good for him, but not for the people around him that, that are outside of that, the friendship group. Definitely. 
Um, so I have just a handful of questions. They're pretty quick, but I wanted to ask because uh, we had a pretty deficiency in Kiki mentions in your confessionals. Um, what percentage of you going into confessionals and having them and then you mentioning Kiki, but them never airing on the show? Uh, what would be the percentage, like 80 percent, 50 percent or just not mentioning her as much? Well, yeah. So the thing about USA was. It's, it's on CBS. It's a little different, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it was the first the first year on CBS. So when you're looking for storylines and stuff, one of the greatest storylines for the challenge that everybody loves is this guy's a former NFL player. Why is he here? Oh, he's here because his wife his wife told him to go, right? So <laughs> naturally, yeah. For, for production is like we're gonna lean into that, right? So anytime on USA when I said something that didn't have to do, like I did a confession, I didn't mention Kiki, they would say. So what would what would your wife think? And I'd be like, well, my wife would. She was like, they were like, no, 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 no. My wife Kiki, right? So they made sure that <laughs> every professional, they 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 kind of got that out of me. This one was totally different. It's new. It was a new uh, producer, so you know, it was a whole different mm -hmm. storyline. And me and Tori had so much stuff going on. Me and Sarah had stuff going on. So in order to fit, like, it would be hard for them to fit that in, and then also fit in what. Uh, what we actually had going on in the house as well. On USA, we were, you know, me, Dom, and Desi were pretty safe. It wasn't really much, you know, for us mm -hmm. to for us to say or do. I think the story kind of revolved around Tyson and Angela, but the algorithm kind of took the the true gameplay out of out of USA. Ugh. Yeah, I hated the algorithm. I almost thought like maybe because there was a Kiki on the cast that people like the audience would get confused of you mentioning Kiki. And then they thinking like, Oh, he's playing with his wife on here. What, what's going on? Like, That's, but it's possible. Yeah, they, they, did have Kiki, they did have Kiki uh, as one of the questions um, on that puzzle after we got out of the lake, it was like, um, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. of these challenge, which of this, which challenger has a partner named Kiki, which two challengers have both have a partner named Kiki. And it was Danny and Darrell. As in my my wife, and then, you know, Darrell. So we finished it, and then production was like, "Well, Kiki made another show, and then they didn't show it." <laughs> I got my wife watching. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you on the final, baby, you on the final." And then, you know, they don't even show the they don't even show the puzzle. I have to say, I think Kiki, your wife, is the most um, the most popular uh, person that has never played the challenge, but in the challenge realm, that she is just the most popular. Um, what do you think about that? Listen, I love it. I love it because she loves the show. And, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that she actually gets something out of it, because, listen, parents being a, like if you're if you are a two parent household and then for six weeks, all of a sudden that is not there. It's super hard. on so you see Sarah's uh, Sarah's mm -hmm. husband of like, listen, this, yeah. this is different than what I'm used to. So in order, you know, for the fact that she gets something out of it and she gets that experience. Like, I, I love it. I love it for her. I love it for the fandom because I think, mm -hmm. my, my, think my wife is great. And I think people love her on Twitter. Uh, you know, so oh, hell you know, yeah. shout out to her. <laughs> yeah. Kiki is queen. Uh, <laughs> just throwing that out there. Uh, I do want to ask you, what was the best daily challenge or what was your favorite daily challenge to play this past season? Oh, man, that's, you know, the best and the worst are with, with Gates of Hell. Because there, there is no mm -hmm. other challenge that is more tailored to to me and my strengths at that point. It is a, it was like a forty yard sprint. It's a forty yard sprint, yeah. um, and I enjoyed it. Right, we got physical in there. Shout out to Czar. I love Czar. I was just, I was just waiting for somebody to to kind of cross that line because I didn't want to be like the guy, right? All oh, the former right. NFL players in here, and he's trying to do blah 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 blah. So the whole time I would be jockeying for position. I was like, hey, listen. I'm playing it how y'all want to play it, okay? So we we gonna keep it cordial and keep it friendly, then we cool. And if y'all want to get rough, then we'll get rough. And then so after Sarah did what she did, I was like, I love you. You know what I'm saying? I I, I love the fight. I love the fight. But then that also goes into the worst one because I still feel like, uh, you know, we should have won that that challenge because based on the rules, especially if you look at how Naya lost that challenge, Naya and Rodri lost because neither one of them got through the gate, but. Naya was further back than Kiki, right? So our whole right. plan is, okay, we have to, I try to hold West back to make sure he can't get to the gate. But then I have to make sure Tori comes in third, right? So I'm holding mm -hmm. Zara back. I'm holding West back, doing all that work. Neither one of us get through the gate. Tori comes in third and 
everybody, everybody, as we're waiting, because we waited for like 30, 40 minutes while they reviewed the tape and they were trying to figure out how they can come up with a winner. Everybody on that sideline is like coming up. They're like, yeah, hey, man, good, good job. Y'all got the win, blah, blah, blah. And I've never been so shocked in my life than when TJ said it was Wes and Zara. And I was, I was super upset, man. It almost took me out of the show. You know, it's just, I think it's so neat with me emotional. The the hourglass twist on, on Survivor and then no. this one where, you listen, you, you know, you think you won based on the rules and your strategy is the rules. Uh, you use, like, if it was, you think about that. I'm faster than Wes. Mm. I would just sprint if that was the rule. <laughs> well, I, would, yeah. I wouldn't even waste my time holding back Zara and holding back Wes. I would just sprint, you know, and, and win. Um, but, you know, it, it didn't work out. So that was the most fun. That was the best one. But, you know, the uh, the end result wasn't wasn't what I had hoped. You did say that maybe this could be your last time playing on the challenge. But if the, if both shows that you have done between Survivor and the challenge called you up, which one were you would you be more apt to say yes to? Oh, the challenge. I, listen, okay. the, the hourglass twist took Survivor away from me. I'll never go back out there. And I mean, I'm like, and it's, it's nothing against them. It's just. Once you throw that in the game to where you could take a win from somebody, then it, it makes no sense for me to go out there and compete because because you can do that anytime, right? You put in all that work mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we're production and we decided that ain't it. So you got to go back and do it. I'm like, I'm 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 okay with that. Um, also, you don't get to get phone calls home. So my wife also would not let me go on Survivor. She only would let me go. On <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes a lot of sense. I mean. I think I'm, I think a lot of people are in the same boat as you. I mean, I know I'm getting kind of tired of it, of all the different twists. It makes the game of Survivor feel almost like a chance game instead of actually having strategy or it being a, a game of like talent or competing. It, it just feels like uh, sometimes it's a lottery with some of these yeah. twists that are a- added now. And it's just so frustrating to watch. Well, the cha- the challenge this season took a little page out of that book with trivia and uh, the la- and the final challenge that was a sabotage. They took a little page out of that where it's not skill, it's, it's strategy, but the trivia thing was no, no, it wasn't even strategy. It was just you know it it could happen to you no matter what. You just be sitting there, you never get to answer a question. Me and Tori never answer one. Jody and Benha never answer one, and somehow you know Jody and Benha ended up you know going into elimination because. You know, just just off chance. Yeah, I normally love trivia, but that trivia challenge was uh, infuriating at a certain point because not everybody got to answer a question. uh, And it's all based on just like who like your person like you could just keep on getting dogpiled with picking ropes. And then by the first one, you're gone. So, yeah, that's Uh, it shouldn't have been random. Like if if we were going to do that and that was going to be roulette, then it should have been based off like if it's Survivor. Jeff and them know everything that's going on in the house, just like production on, on the challenge where you're like, OK, I mm-hmm. think we have the perfect lineup for the first round of trivia to where it's going to be hard. So if you put me, Troy, I mean, me, um, Casey and Troy and Jordan and Cass in the first in the first one. Right. So now it's like, mm-hmm. OK, who is who is Casey going to put hers on? Who is Jordan going to put his on? Who are we going to put ours on? Right. Maybe we put it right. on ourselves. Maybe Tori's like, yeah, we I can't do it. We just, <laughs> we just <laughs> Oh man. I could just see you see both of you just pulling ropes <laughs> one after I, I another. Was, I was pulling the rope. I would never pull that rope. I would have just been like, TJ, I'm not doing it. Like y'all better figure out a rule for Tori and she gotta make a decision because I'm not pulling my own rope. I do want to ask one more question, and I forgot to ask it during the Gates of Hell talk. Um, but you thought you won you and tori won the gates of hell daily challenge would you have wanted to win because it seems like you guys had camps on both sides of the house that if you were to have won uh would that have like done something to to both of your game that where it's like i don't like who would you have how would that have happened like do you think that not winning anything was almost better for both of you uh because then it got to like never had to show your cards or anything yeah, so I think that was the challenge where we decided that we weren't then going to try to really win anymore. Um, it worked mm-hmm. out for us. You know, Roger was hurt, but I don't think we would have had the numbers to make the decision that we wanted to, and I would have had to probably put in an Australian or Argentinian anyways because, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. me and Tori up there, and I'm not picking them <laughs> over me, so I would have I <laughs> did what she wanted me to do. 
Um, but yes, I was, I was glad we didn't win. And, and good thing we brought this up. The reason why I'm not saying we would have won for sure any of these challenges, but the reason why mm-hmm. you don't see us then being in the running for winning is Tory can't choose. Cause I'll, the only thing I want Tory to do is say, Hey, Casey's my number one or Jordan's my number one because the situation that could possibly arise, and I had this conversation with her many times, is if you have two number ones and you can't decide, and I know that Sarah's my number one, so when Sarah is thrown up there with Jordan, then we have there. There is no precedent for like who should be who should be able to vote that person in, right? Well, same thing right. with Sarah and Casey. So now we can't win because if we put in that situation, it's us going in, I'll have to turn my back on Sarah because all because you couldn't just decide, hey man, Jordan's one and Casey's number two. So every every challenge she would come in there, she'd be like, listen, we're not winning. I was like, listen, if you want me to go as hard as I could possibly go, then you need to tell me who the number one is. And she would get upset. She'd be like, I'm not answering that question. I, I'm tired of you asking me. And then she would leave the room. I was like, all right, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're not, you're not putting me in that situation. And you see when we get in the voting situation where – you have to vote in Casey. You can't do it because mm-hmm. she's also your number one. Like, so when I'm saying, like, just pick one, it's specifically for that reason. All right. I was off of Jordan. Mm-hmm. I just need you to tell me for for the purpose of like when we standing up there and you said that this person is your number one and your number two, then I can I can look at you and say, hey, you told me that was your number two. That's my number mm-hmm. one. It's a clear choice for who we need to be putting into uh, elimination. And we we actually never got to that point. Never got to that point. She never said it. <laughs> never said it. Jordan, Jordan made the decision for her when we signed that contract. <laughs> but she never said it. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's another way of thinking two steps down the line that if you go and do podcasts or uh, somehow something else comes out and then it's like, oh, Casey's number two. And then... Uh, then Casey could use that against her, but I mean, it never came down to it. So I mean, it's it's too much. It's too much into the into the future because you're not guaranteed. Uh, well, some people aren't guaranteed the next season or the season after. And I felt like I don't know. It was kind of unfair to you at a certain point to be like for it to feel like the legends are looking so far to either the next spinoff or the 39 or 40 even and you're sitting here just like, I don't, I don't know if I'm even going to be here next year. I don't I don't even think I, I want to do this next time. So, I mean, it's kind of salty. Yeah. It, to me, I'm a little salty by by how some of the gameplay went or somehow some of the decisions being played out. Yeah, and I, and I like to say this, too, because I, I know I heard a lot of a lot of people and I, and I get it. Uh, yeah, you're protecting Sarah and Emily. And you got to deal with Grant. And then Tori's doing the same thing. She's protecting her people. And I'll say this to those people. You watch my season of Survivor. Okay? Me, Deshaun. Did you watch, did you watch that season? Oh, yeah. Okay, so me, me Deshaun, uh, Liana, and Shan are all, in a, all in, a, uh, in a group, right? And we're all essentially number ones. We want to make it to make it to the end. Shan decides that she picks her relationship with Ricard over our relationship as a four and what do mm-hmm. i do vote her out <laughs> yeah when when it's time for me to get voted in right me and deshaun are number ones we've been rolling together since day one on survival right he votes for mm-hmm. me i vote for him we didn't vote for ourselves i would never do that so no i'm not protecting <laughs> emily and yes and making deals all over the place i made two deals I made two deals. The first deal I made was with Sarah before we went on the show. And I said, listen, how we, how do you want to do this? They're probably going to come after the champions. So we, if you want to stick together. If you don't, I get it. But if you do, let's, let's rock. She's like, okay, yeah, let's rock. I was like, but I'm going to tell you this. If it comes down to me and you or any a decision I need to make for my game uh, that would jeopardize it if I try to save you, I'm picking me. And I want you to do the same mm-hmm. thing. And we were on the same page about that for the entire game before we even got on the show. And then when I got on the show, I made a deal with Darrell to never say his name, which I had to break that deal because my partner, <laughs> uh, you know, she didn't want to make a tough decision <laughs> to go to go another route. And before I voted for him, I literally looked at, his, looked at him in his face and I said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but 
like I hope you can see the situation that's going on right now because I'm always gonna pick you. Like I, I would never. It's all about me winning that money, not not anybody else. And if you know a decision I have to make to cut a friend loose. Uh, needs to be made so I can come back home with some money, then I'm going to make that decision every time. And I'm going to tell you before that, you should do it. <laughs> if it's me and you, you should pick you because I'm picking me. And I think that's exactly how the game should be played, no matter if you're a legend, an MVP champion, or just a normal challenger or a rookie. I think that you should be playing to win um, at all times or having the intensity to go for the win. Uh, Danny. I just want to say thank you so much for being here and talking so much about the challenge world championship. It has been a pleasure to watch you win in the challenge USA, watch you compete and get second place on the challenge world championship. I mean, in your first two seasons, you're, you're not going to have the park. I mean, no elimination scene, making it to the finals, either winning or getting second place. I mean, did you expect to have this much success uh, when the challenge called you up and was like, hey, you want to come play? And you're like, yeah, I'll come play and I'll win. <laughs> Be, being a competitor, of course, you expect I expect to go in there, you know, and, and put up a good fight and possibly win. But I think knowing what the challenge is and I know that it doesn't usually suit uh, my strengths. Right. What a football player is. Right. It's short bursts. It's 100 yards. We don't do anything with heights. Uh, you don't see us really swimming like that. Like our, our we focus on the football field the whole time. So I knew it was going to be a challenge, mm-hmm. but just based off how Survivor went for me. So I never got my name written down until it was time for me to then go home. Uh, I was like, I think my social game may be okay. Um, not see any eliminations. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say this to TJ. Like, That's two seasons with no eliminations. He was like, yeah, man, you're such a nice guy. You're a nice guy. You're a sweetheart. And then also, who wants to go into elimination and see you in a hall bro or pole wrestle? You could do puzzles and do all that stuff. I was like, oh, you know what, TJ, man? Thank you, bro. You're, you're a star. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, just, uh, yeah, I mean, congratulations again for being a challenge champ, which not a lot of people can say say that in their own uh, in their own way, or even there's nine time vets and uh, eight time vets. I can't even say that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your experiences. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I, I hope, I hope we will see you in the future on the challenge in some way, but if not, I, I just thank you so much for uh, taking some time out to talk here and letting us get to see you compete uh, on two seasons of the challenge. Yeah, man. Appreciate you for having me. I enjoy the content. Um, I, I, you know, it feels good to be able to come on here too, because I watch it as soon as the show goes off. I watch it on Monday. I watch it on Tuesday. I watch the tiny tape, all that stuff, right? It helps get me through the season. Cause you, of course you, you want to hear what other people have to say about it, see if they feel the same. And then mm-hmm. the amount of content and the quality of the content that you put out, uh, is next level. So man, appreciate you for having me on. Oh, thank you so much. 